Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we're going to redo an old power scaling video. How strong is Unicron Trilogy Optimus Prime? And someone pointed out that I didn't include the evidence for the High Autoversal, and I went back and looked, and yeah, I, um, I messed up. So here's me correcting that mistake here. So let's start off with the simplicity, or at least where we could start off at. So Unicron Trilogy Optimus Prime consists of Transformers Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. With Cybertron being the strongest of Optimus Primes, or at least being the strongest of the trilogy, all right? Basically, that Optimus Prime from Armada is the same one you're going to see in Cybertron. So... Yeah, I think you guys can understand it, right? So this Octum Shrine would actually scale above Galvatron, who was not only able to tank attacks from his creator, but one-shot him. Keep in mind, Primus was at three-fourths of his power, but again, three-fourths of a multiversal to outerversal being is still a multiversal to outerversal being, even if he's weakened. And the fact that Megatron was still able to one-shot him, even ignore his, um, his attacks from him, despite the sheer fact that but this Primus was also able to beat a Starscream that had three, again, three-fourths of his power and then absorbed an additional fourth to that power, or at least enough to even get a fourth of his power, is still um, pretty astounding. <laughs> and yet Optimus Prime was still able to clean a Galvatron, or at least clock a Galvatron, who was getting stronger. All right, this Optimus Prime actually was progressing through the entirety of the Unicron trilogy. And this Optimus Prime beat Unicron's Avatar, Unicron Spark, and then went on to beat Megatron dash Galvatron, who had the armor of Unicron and the powers of Unicron, who and would be actually surpass the avatars of even the primes in this one. This Optimus Prime was also capable of tanking the multiversal singularity explosion of Unicron's um, chaotic form at point blank with his back turned to it. So again, it's absolutely ridiculous how powerful this um, Optimus Prime is. And then he went on to fight Galvatron, which would end up like in the original. Now, this Optimus Prime has a lot of weaponry on him from energy cannons that can harm Galvatron, but where he really shines is the ability to power link. Now, power linking is an ability given to him by Nexus Prime, a multiversal singularity. However, Optimus Prime can combine with a number of different Autobots or even component parts that he carries with him, which allows him to turn into his super mode. Now, his super mode would actually give him a significant multiplier. We'll probably just go by like Dragon Ball logic here and say it's like a 10 times multiplier or something like that. Same with like Minicons, which actually give a multiplier to the Cybertronians as well. However, Optimus Prime does not have that in this trilogy. I think he did have one in the Armada series, but I don't think he kept it permanently. But we'll count the um, power linking since he did keep that permanently. So with this power linking, Optimus Prime has been able to defeat Megatron a multitude of times. And again, being able to harm someone with the armor of Unicron and the strongest herald of Unicron, meaning that this Megatron will surpass Ramjet. Ramjet, a being that had four or four to five dead universes, five Minicons, which is again multiplying his power, and a direct connection to Unicron. And yet Optimus Prime was still able to defeat this Megatron. Keep in mind as well, this Megatron was clowning Vector Prime throughout a large majority of the series, which again is no small feat. Vector Prime is one of the top two or top three strongest of the 13 original Primes. It's someone who actually understands the Transformers Omniverse and is a bot is that I said a bond, is above dimensionality itself here. And these are the true forms of the primes. Vector Prime was even able to create a dimension for the true forms of the primes to be housed in because if they didn't have like a dimension they could really sustain themselves in and where they had to assimilate avatars to be put on a lower level, then this means that they would actually one-shot the Transformers Omniverse. Now, the Transformers Omniverse is a collection of universes, sorry, not universes, is a collection of multiverses, which even other continuities are a part of, such as Star Wars, Ben 10, and even to a degree, yes, Marvel is a part of the Transformers um, Omniverse as well.
The Transformers Omniverse, or at least these one universes, are infinite in size with infinite possibilities attached to them, making one universe an actual multiverse. Because again, what ifs in the Transformers verse actually count as canon? So I want you guys to actually think of a what if in your head and it will come as canon. If you said, what if Sideswipe and Mirage survived the events of Age of Extinction, that would count as canon. What if Jazz survived the first movie? What kind of canon? What, what if Bumblebee died in the first movie? What kind of canon? What if Grimlock and the Dinobots went back to Iacon in the Fall of Cybertron game? What count as canon? What if what if Thor crossed over into Transformers? Canon. What if Godzilla did it? Canon. Again, these multiverses have an infinite amount of possibilities attached to them. All right. As long as it pretty much confides within the Transformers multiverse, they would count as canon, even crossovers. So, again, I think that should make a lot of you fans here of Transformers really appreciative because, again, an infinite multiverse with infinite possibilities counting towards that one specific universe. So if it's IDW, that what if will count towards IDW. If it's Bayverse, that that what if will count towards the Bayverse continuity. And again, remember, these primes are multiversal singularities. And some of them, like Alchemist Prime, know of every infinite possibility of the multiverse. And they know how to manipulate them and even destroy them if need be. So again, the Unicron Trilogy Optimus Prime would scale to these guys. There's even the sheer fact that the Primes themselves, or at least Vector Prime and Galvatron, both battled on the Astral Plane. A, pretty much a space that is well beyond um, even the realm of the Primes. So Megatron is fighting against a being that can go to the astral plane, or at least a being that can actually fight on the astral plane where the primes are at their strongest, stronger than the dimension that they're in here. Now, again, you could say, oh, was it, wouldn't that be extraversal? Yes, you could, event, you could get it to that. You really could. But again, I would rather stick with High Outer for Optimus and from the Unicron trilogy because it just makes more it makes more sense. There's more evidence to support that than going to extraversal here. All right. So I'm basically just sticking with the um the evidence I was able to collect and recompile and then recompose together. All right. So yeah, Optimus Prime from the Unicron trilogy would be into the high outerversal areas because he is beyond dimensionality. All right, and even beyond beings that are consistently above dimensionality themselves. So again, you could really have that as well. And being able to beat Unicron multiple times, even being above beings that can beat the Unicron singularity, which was going to destroy everything in the Transformers multiverse is no small feat. Keep in mind the Transformers multiverse consists of micro universes, conceptual realms, metaphysical planes, higher realms that are higher than the metaphysical and conceptual planes. Then you also have the Elder Gods realm, which is a realm pretty much swirled in antimatter. You have Unspace, which is a pretty much an interdimensional plane of existence that teleport that only teleporters could really get to. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that um these realms are just there. And what's higher than the higher realms and the Elder Gods plane, right? Well, that's pretty simple. You have Hytherian's plane, which is known noted to be a higher space optimal realm keep in mind the transformers multiverse is 17 to 22 um space optimal dimensions here and they again have realms like life death power resurrection cold time fire ice lightning it, they have realms that are simply conceptual all right it does not matter you even have the vox dimension which is again another place beyond the multiverse and which should be i guess you could say on the same level as the elder god planes if not you could possibly suggest it's a bit lower they never really rank where these places are however we do know of two realms that are beyond all of these planes here well three if you count the astral plane and then the realm that the guiding hands that pretty much sit at 
So keep in mind that Unicron Trilogy, um, Octus Prime as well, should scale above Regenesis Shockwave. I feel like I should add that. No. Now, the realms that would actually be way higher than um, the higher realms, the Elder Gods Planes, and the Valk Pain, ah, Valk Planes would actually be the Cloud World and the Axion Nexus. Keep in mind, these planes here are very high they're like the highest of the highest when it comes to the transformers multiverse they actually oversee everything that goes on in the transformers sorry omniverse this even includes the elder gods realms and the Valk realms they basically view all of it and again they have their own versions of characters and this would also upscale maximals and um Predacons as well because trans techs were actually confirmed to be the sequel to beast machines meaning that cheetor optimus primal rat trap silver bolt black no black arachnia would have all have been trans techs there's even characters like starscream megatron and then there's a trans tech optimus prime now you could say this Optimus Prime is a lot stronger than the um than the Unicron trilogy one, and I would not I wouldn't be mad about that. I could even agree upon that. But again, Unicron trilogy Optimus Prime just has a lot more going for him. That that's the best way I could really say it, or best way I could really show it here is that Unicron trilogy Optimus Prime just has a lot more going for him on a regular basis, or at least by consistency and um which we call it, and by um, feats here. But, again, at the end of the day here, this Optimus Prime should also be easily faster than light as well. Keep in mind, he was scaled a Wing Saber, who was able to cross from one part of the universe to the other. And again, every universe is infinite in size. All right? So, again, it just, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. He would have immeasurable to inaccessible levels of speed even being beyond characters like vector prime who can do interdimensional travel with his speed alone and also should be comparable to the technomorphs who are also able to use interdimensional travel by their own speeds which is again faster than light to immeasurable levels of speed here these guys have like silver surfer speed on a regular basis and again the primes themselves are omnipresent omni you know they're omnipresent now some of them are omniscient like alchemist prime who can predict every possible outcome but again these primes are omnipresent meaning they have infinite speed you know they, they have infinite levels of stamina they don't get tired but again they can take damage in their avatar forms so what would this Unicron Trilogy Optimus Prime have? He should have infinite stamina because, again, he's been fighting this war for millions upon millions of years. So there should be no um, contest about that. He should have conceptual uh, He should have conceptual levels of attack potencies or at least affect things on a conceptual level as he's able to fight characters like the avatars of Unicron and even being able to harm avatars who are wearing armor of Unicron, which again would be conceptual as Unicron himself in his avatar states are platonic concepts, which transcend nature by the virtue of their existence. So this Optimus should also be beyond characters like Volcanicus Grimlock, who was able to not only go toe-to-toe -to -toe with um, an evil avatar of Primus, but was able to split his head and defeat him. This Optimus Prime should also be beyond Regenesis Shockwave and Alternity Optimus Prime, to which Regenesis Shockwave is able to destroy the conceptual realms and the higher realms of the IDW multiverse. And then there's Alternity Optimus Prime, who should be well beyond what Regenesis Shockwave is capable of. And uh what you call i almost i know i said it earlier and was able to defeat a megatron powered hytherian sorry no 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 actually a hytherian powered <laughs> megatron and there's also takara optimus prime who was able to channel the power of primus 
or at least true form primus in a way or at least an avatar here Let, let's be let's be real here channel the power of an avatar of primus and being able to pretty much destroy this avatar of unicron keep in mind as well trilogy optimus prime can also combine as well boosting his powers with his super mode he has sonic wing mode savage claw mode and he can use things like metroplex's axe and could also summon Raceling when or whenever he really needs it, which is a weapon that can cut on a conceptual level and erase your very concept from existence. Keep in mind this will also scale him above some of the higher ups of even other verses like Star Wars, maybe even some characters in Marvel. Probably, I think he could probably box with the Living Tribunal if I'm being honest here. And it's also possible he would scale above other beings like the alien x or the celestial sapiens of his verse so at the end of the day this optimus would be high out reversal with conceptual bypass in being able to attack on a conceptual level durability negation and having the access to the powers of multiversal singularities this legendary grimlock and i hope you guys have a blessed day peace